Set off in the article, and everything yeah. else would be like, he didn't joke, but it's just, that's what Twitter was. Um, you know, I think 300 is going to be, you know, the, the 100th episode was very much the straight up episode of Supernatural. The 200th episode went very much in the other direction, where it was very meta and commentary on the show. I think for the 300, we want to do something that kind of lies in the middle, and the idea kind of floating around right now is Sam and Dean for years have lived in the bunker. The bunker is in a place called Lebanon, Kansas, which is a real town, very small town. We've never actually seen Lebanon, Kansas on the show. We've never actually seen like what these people in this town think of these two guys who drive this muscle car through, but like here's the dry cleaner, and I think they have a lot of blood on their clothes. Like, what's going on there? So it becomes kind of how do how do these people kind of view Sam and Dean with a Sam and Dean story in there too? So we think can be kind of a real love letter to the show uh, in, in a, what we hope is going to be a very heartwarming way. So with means, murder. So Heartwarming with murder. So that means um, <laughs> Dean will be Dean again. Willie? Really? <laughs> well, uh, Dean will be, you know, the thing with Dean and being Dean is that Dean is not always Dean. And even when Dean's being Dean, Dean isn't always the Dean we know. What does that mean? <laughs> what does it mean? <laughs> Dean. That's the, question, that's the question we're asking ourselves. So speaking of Michael in Dean as Dean with us. <laughs> um, will we see parts of Dean trying to fight out, or will it be Michael, at least um, initially? We'll see Dean putting up a valiant fight, uh, but that's a real hard fight to win. But Dean's a fighter. He's going to try to get out, even if it doesn't quite work, go his way. How does that visually like look? Um, there are a lot, we have a couple of different approaches to it. Some are very like, you know, he looks into a mirror and Dean is talking to him through the mirror. And some are, as we've done in the show in the past, going into people's heads and things like that. It, it's really dependent on the story more than any specific, like, this is the way we're always going to do it. You saw Dean, like, powerful moments when Dean's reacting to his brother when he was Lucifer. How might we see Sam reacting to his brother when he's like the other side of that whole story? I think you've got a Sam who's really, really you know, scared, yet also cautious in a way, you know, they, ha you know, because the question is like, let's say you even had a way to kill Michael, which they don't at the moment, but let's say you did, in doing so, would you also kill Dean, you know what I mean? So I think Sam, as much as he wants to find Dean, drive Michael out of Dean, that's his number one goal, is save Dean. His number one goal is not necessarily kill Michael, it's a very different goal in some ways. So you've got a Sam who I'm not saying he's say being cautious, because he's extremely driven and wants to get kind of what he gets. But you, you do have, he has, does have an agenda, and that agenda is the same as well. We saw the clip in the panel where you kind of see that Michael has an agenda. Mm -hmm. um, can you preview a little bit about what Michael is trying to do and accomplish? Sure. I mean, they, even the last, the last episode of last season, he said he wanted to make a kind of a pure world. So the question is, what does that mean? Uh, and even Michael in the, la in the last episode of last season said the world he has right now is not what he wanted. This was not the plan. A bombed out apocalypse world was like not the goal, right? So when he comes to our world, he has a second chance. That's the good news. The bad news is, what's he going to do and how's he going to go about doing it, essentially. We know that, you know, whatever happened between angels and demons, kind of all-out war, this nuclear war, essentially, um, did not work. So he's going to have a different strategy going in. The strategy may look on its surface a little less violent and that, you know, the world is not being blasted to ash. That doesn't mean it's any less insidious or that his end goal, which is essentially create a world that's pure, a world that he believes is essentially pure enough for him, worthy of him. That's what he wants. Will he play a part in recharging heaven? Um, Mike, as we saw, Lucifer can't create new angels. Michael can't either. So you've got a guy who, you know, but that's that's actually an issue for him. Because, you know, in Apocalypse World, he had an army of angels. He had all the angels united behind him. Now he comes in, there's no army there. You know, there's ten angels. That's not an army. So what do you do when your go-to, like, power base is not there? Where do you go? Do you try to go without it? Do you try to find another power base? That becomes a question he's asking himself. We also have some very big openings, vacancies as it were, in heaven and hell. Does that play into the immediate uh, story as we enter into the next season? It does, as it kind of always does. Um, and I think that chaos is something that certainly someone like Michael can take advantage of. How might Castiel and maybe even Jack, given his birthright, help with the situation in heaven? I think you've got, you know, for Cass it's a big deal, because Cass I think feels in some ways personally responsible for what's happening, although at the in the beginning of the season his focus is on Dean finding Dean. Jack's a little bit different, 
His, only, his experience with angels are not positive, other than Castiel. He's never been to heaven. He doesn't know the infrastructures are there. So for him, it exists almost more as a theoretical. Not that like, the coming ghost of Pop is a big deal, but he's not, he doesn't have skin in the game. He doesn't have somebody who's there who he knows, other than the people in heaven who he's loved, like his mom, for example, that are, that are uh, directly at risk. Are there any new characters um, like, that you can really talk about? Um, we're going to see a few new characters. Uh, brought over a bunch of hunters from Apocalypse World who are going to feel a little bit better. Um, but I would say, and, you know, as the season goes on, new characters will come in as they always do. Um, but I think really our focus is on, we've got a lot, we've got a big cast. We've got a lot of people who, you know, want and need more time. We've got a lot of people who we know but we don't really know. You know, like Apocalypse World Charlie, Apocalypse World Bobby. Like, if you think they're the people you loved on Supernatural when they were on Supernatural, they are not. They've been, they may look the same, they may talk the same, they may even act the same in some ways, but they've been through extremely different experiences, which have shaped them in ways that have uh, made them maybe not the characters we're used to. So we'll be seeing them frequently? Uh, they're certainly part in the mix, yes. How are you, um, it looks like you're broadening the um, use of religion and multiple religions this season. What approach are you taking in including those in the story? I think, you know, certainly Supernatural has always, always been a show that religion is a monolithic thing in Supernatural. Like, you can put any kind of face on it, but there is a creator. It's a, you know, we live in a where it's a very monotheistic show, let's put it that way, or has been, it's certainly in the past. I, so I think, you know, our guys tend to look at all religions as an aspect of, I mean, they've met God, you know what I mean? So it's not that anybody's right or it's not that anybody's wrong, they just have different approaches to it. And I think we're looking at someone like Michael, but he's going around and trying to find, like, basically he's going around and it's like, is there one good human? Is there one human worth saving? You know, because if you remember the angels when we were doing the Apocalypse of Season 5, they were going to save about a thousand, basically. They, they decided a thousand were worth it. Michael's trying to find one. So he's casting a very wide net, and uh, as we saw in the teaser, he certainly hasn't found one yet. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.